All right, thank you everybody for coming. Um, today we are very excited to talk about our Lego software. Uh, this has been many years in the making. We've had lots of contributors helping with this, including our own Daryl Kipke. Um, just adding some more people here as they come in. Uh, yeah, we're very excited about it, and not just because Daryl did it and he signs our checks. Um, we actually think this is a really cool software platform. Uh, so while we're waiting for more people to join, I wanted to let everyone know that this is a series of webinars that we're doing Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, so we have some upcoming webinars. Next, next Thursday is going to be pretty much everything electrodes. So uh, deep brain to small animal, uh, surface, optos, matrix. We'll go through our naming nomenclature so that hopefully that'll make a little more sense to you when you're looking through the catalog and you're like, what is this? We'll hopefully answer all those questions for you. And in two weeks, uh, April 30th, we're gonna do a deeper dive into the Alego software also. And uh, this today will be more of an overview. And um, in May, we, uh, we have some tentatively scheduled uh, special guests that are gonna talk for us. Um, if you wanna be a presenter for us, or um, if you have any ideas for webinars that you wanna see, just let us know. There's a uh, chat here that I will just say hi to everyone in. Um, feel free to use that during the, the whole webinar here. Um, if you, you don't have to send it to everyone. If you go down at the bottom, you can send it to just uh, me, the host, Matt Davis. Um, and then uh, I can um, ask, uh, answer your questions after. So everyone's muted right now. We're gonna ask that you stay muted during the presentation um, and then we'll have the question and answer section after that. And it looks like we have a pretty good number of people in here. So we'll go ahead and start. Um, Asiya Golbachi is gonna um, be our presenter today. She is uh, she has a PhD from IIT in Italy. She had her postdoc at University of Pittsburgh. She's been at NeuroNexus for just over three months now and we, we feel like we're really lucky to have her. She's a great asset. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Asiya. Thanks Matt for a great introduction. Um, hello everyone. So as you see, the title is written a Lego webinar part one. So heads up, as Matt explained you, um, we, are, we decided to divide this webinar to two parts. So in this section, we are gonna go through the story behind this software and why we decided to develop that and what's the features and advantage of this over the other available softwares um, in the market. So um, I suggest you after watching this video, if by now still you have not downloaded our software, just go and um, request for a trial version. And after this webinar, play with this. And if you come with the question, you can, uh, you know, on April 30th that we are going with the second part and at the live version, we are gonna play with the Lego, then you can come, come up with the questions or further concerns that you have about this software. So um, I'm gonna start. Uh, first, let me tell you what at NeuroNexus we are, what's our goal and what we do. So uh, we are um, supporting the neuroscience by providing the uh, neurotech tools and our goal is to increase the recording site more specifically um, improve um, the and learn from uh, you know brain uh, brain features to see how we can give more information and support neuroscientists and at the same time you know helping uh, the people in the neuromodulation field to treat some you know, some sorts of disease like Alzheimer's through microscopy. 
stimulation approaches. And um, so considering this, as Matt said, and probably you were joining, um, you know, our last week webinar, you understood that we are at Neuronexus, we are offering different type of uh, devices that these devices, you know, they can be customized and, and then you can come with different uh, features like the electric side or uh, different channel um, counts you can consider. And then these electrodes can be surface, surface arrays that they can sit either on the electrode, on the uh, skull or on the brain surface and you can capture LFB or let's say EG or ECOG um, recordings and then we have these penetrating arrays that you can uh, specifically track the single cell activity. So these penetrating array they can come in single shank or multiple shank and then you can also manage the um, let's say the uh, the length of your shank to see what's your target region to approach. And at the same time, you have different electrode configuration that through this configuration, you're gonna track uh, more locally uh, and more dense location and be more specific. So considering all of this, uh, you see that um, uh, this field is increasing, um, is uh, need more knowledge for learning and adding more recording side at the same time you know we are trying to um, cover uh, more locations so one of the excuse me so one of the problems that I'm sure as a neurophysiologist if you guys do recording you have been faced that and that would be um, that you really like when you're doing recording you know you want to have this real-time mapping so consider that if you are adding your channel count then you have a lot of electric sites that you like to see at the same time considering the location in the brain or you know like for example here uh, at uh, you know one of the examples that uh, has been published by Buzaki's group they were using the electrode that is coming with different uh, you know shanks and at the same time they want to track each shank at each location and they have categorized each recording um, you know, afterward. So this interest, you know, give, um, so one of the things that actually is very important in science is the time, right? So you want to immediately look at your uh, features, your data, and then see what exactly, what information you're taking. So of course, later you can go and through the offline sorting track and achieve these designs. But one of the thing is that, that is necessary is the real-time mapping that uh, so far, you know, it's very difficult because the electrodes are coming with some map and then coordinating that with the adapter or the header stage that you're using is one of the obstacles that people are facing right now. So considering this, what are, as I said, the problem that right now is people are trying to, to design more complex, uh, you know, features or set up for the recording and at the same time you know the goal is to learn more and more from uh, you know from the brain and at the same time you know we have these uh, agencies funding agencies that they're pushing uh, scientists toward sharing this you know neural data and uh, this can cause really significant um, you know questions that is going to be how we are going to handle these large and complex um, you know volume of the data and then how we are going to analyze or how we want to visualize how we want to share this with other group and uh, also at the same time we are going to have different group of this audience that they're going to come up with their own questions so this one is going to be the scientists that they have their own uh, type of questions then they're going to be in institute or departments and at the same time the funding agencies and you know and of course you know that the science is not gonna, is never stopping, right? It's, it's growing and all of these problems, you know, just made Neuronexus think about this and we said, okay, so there is these problems, people are facing this and let's face it. Let's see what's, what would be the best way to fix this problem and help neuroscientists. And for that, let me show you what exactly, what's the stage of us. So, so as a neurotech company, we are providing these sensors and electrodes according to the target. You can choose any target that you have. And then we have designed our hardware system that in this webinar, I'm not going to talk about it, but later, please stay tuned with us because 
it's also one of the you know uh, high quality performance hardware that we are going to later tell you about it. But today I want to <clears throat> talk with you about our Olego software or our uh, you know that ha that has been compatible with our hardware and at the same time you know it's very powerful software that independently you can use it for um, you know for data creation visualization and uh, this one can be really pro uh, centric coming with this probe centric feature that is going to be very helpful. So um, following the slides, I'm going to show you the features that is the advantage of Allego and for each one, I'm going to walk you through all the steps. So one of the features that we are going to talk today is about the real time mapping that I told you it would be very difficult for real time tracking the uh, location of your electrode in the brain. And then uh, it would be very easy to trace it because it's going to be colored it and at the same time you can customize your interface according to the header stage that you're using according to the electorate that you're using and then since this software the goal is to be very powerful it's right now is very powerful but we are adding more features and it's the part that you can also give your input to us we are very open to support your um, you know your um, your studies so please just if you have any um, suggestion for this part you can also come up and email us and ask us then we are going to work on that and um another thing is that it's giving you this option for intuitive recording and it's very easy to uh, go and convert your data which we are we are going to also show you really great and cool update for this part and last but not least it's going to let you very flexible offline visualization of your data and even if you have recorded your data with the other stuff with, with the other system you would be able to come here look at your data and then handle and manage your data in and then see what has happened um, you know what, what you have recorded um, uh, earlier so Considering this, let's <clears throat> show you what, uh, what's the main workspace for that for LIGO. So if I um, if you look at this feature here, uh, the first thing that um, you know in the dashboard you are going to see when you are looking right now at the mo at the monitor, probably you are going to remember the time that you are looking at the home screen of your tablet or uh, your um, your what you call your cell phone, right? So it's coming from very high level of uh, performance and the design that you see, uh, the way that it has been designed is very user friendly. You can just click on each function that has been designed on this, on this, on this da dashboard, the main workspace, and then you can track the activity or the features that you're looking for. And other cool features about it is that, is that each of these features have been designed in this left tray here that either by uh, by selecting this or going through this left section, you can uh, you can do uh, or you can decide for the feature that you want to look. And the other thing, if you look at at this bottom uh, <clears throat> tray here, you can see that you can we call it a status tab, which honestly is one of the uh, uh, favorite part for me because it gives you a lot of information about what are the status of your um, you know connections the hardware connections then you can ch check the streaming if, if you're streaming or if you're recording then what's the duration and also you can check the level of the memory and then one of the other things that um, when you are designing your <clears throat> workspace by you know opening different uh, views for this electorate, you can add as much as uh, view that you want for your electorate through this tab here. And then later, when you are happy with this workspace, you can push this button here, and then you can save your workspace. And then later, when you close your electro, and then uh, for the next time that you're opening that, it's gonna show you the same workspace that you have saved it before. So I think we are cool. Uh, we are good for this right now. We can go and look uh, at the other feature. So okay, um, the other things that uh, through this uh, software you can check is the connection of your hardware and check what are the status of uh, you know the connected ports. And the other uh, feature, so you can see here in the bottom, for example, since we just choose the training mode uh, through the system, that is really good, you know, for people that they want to practice and learn more about this software, you can see that it shows that these two ports A and B is connected and um, you can track the rest of the details uh, through this status bar in the bottom. And the other thing is that, you know, through the signals panel here, you can check the uh, channels, 
the uh, electrodes that are connected and at the same time you know you can select or deselect these features so we can dive in for these details later in the next webinar when i'm showing you when in the online version that what exactly is happening and at the same time you know since we can check the connection of our peripherals this system tab would be the place that you can go and uh you know check for uh you know for example syncing your ephes data with your uh if you're doing for example the behavioral study if you want to sync your ephes data with those these would be the place that to um these digital in and digital out you can either accept the TTL pulses or send it out, and then uh, you know it would be um, it would be sync with whatever uh, your outputs are going to be or your connections are going to be. So okay, so we are done with this section, and let's go for uh, monitoring for the electric tab and uh, the story that I told you how um, you can um, visualize your real time mapping. So through uh, choosing the electorate and monitor tab through your system view uh, you can go and uh, you know go select your port here since we are going through the training mode we are, we are not going to change those I'm just going to show you how you can pull select the header stage and you can see the electorates that you can choose them according um, to your design. And another thing, if you are using other electrodes apart from your Nexus, you can go with the default version here and just choose them. And then you can see these um, tools here that through these tools, you can actually play with your uh, electrodes and then go with the uh, with you know visualizing or uh, making the recording the way that you like it. So through this monitor view here, you can see that, for example, you can see these potential signals that are coming. However, right now I'm interested, for example, to prioritize this. And at the same time, if you look through these features, you see that you can control the time. And at the same time, you can go with changing the spacing at this level. And then right now you're seeing the heat map that is really great, cool, because give you this option to very uh, easily visualize the performance of your channels according to the amplitude that is happening. And so let's, uh, let's come back to the classic view and then we are going to show you how you can go through this ordering and visualize your recording according or prioritize that. So through this, by toggling this add and remove button, for example, consider this electorate here. So it was electorate four, five that is disappeared and then watch again, I'm going to add it and it's appearing again here. So it's cool, right? And then the other thing is that right now I want to go with the order and I will say, okay, what I want to do, I want to select, for example, these electrodes, these type of electrodes. And then, and after selecting this, then I say, you know what, right now I want to say, look, I want to see at this. And then what it gives me, it gives me the advantage to bring these channels to the top of my monitor and look at those at, uh, at the real time and then see what is that exactly is happening. And if I go over each of these uh, electrodes, you know, it gives me also the information that you're seeing here considering the channel number. And then the other thing is that if you want to, for example, after this, you want to just go and say, okay, I want to go through the X, Y, Z uh, coordination and I want to look at all my depths at the same time and then it will but what this feature is giving you actually right now the electrodes that are in the bottom are going to come at the top of your monitor and then the ones that are in the shallow region of your electrode they're coming they're going to be the at the bottom list of your electrode sites and the other and also you can do the same and you can play the same feature using the y and x and then it's going to go through each shank and then you can look at each shank first and then second shank then third shank and then um until the end so this is going to be really easy feature uh that is gonna it's gonna be very user friendly and then the other thing is that i'm sure you like to hear the activity of the signals and then through this you can go to this feature and check the left and right bottoms to select your channels and another cool feature is that if you go to the system tab 
And through the peripherals here, by looking at the analog, you can go and select the channels that you want to hear and select it if it wants to be left channel, if it wants to be right channel, and it would be very easy to you know, track and listen. And apart from that, the, this cool feature on the monitor, you can immediately select if I want to hear or if I want to stop hearing that. So let's, uh, so right now, uh, what we observed through this feature, the promise that I gave you earlier, was that right now we could do automated real-time mapping. We saw how easily you can trace your signals and how you can be, it can be customizable interface using the features that was in the electric tab and monitor control. So, it's not the end of a story. Still, we have a lot of more surprise for you that I'm sure you guys are gonna love it. The other thing is the powerful signal processing that we told you. And through that, if you go through the system and choose your signal processing tab, you can play with the filters here. So if you look at the filters, um, you know, uh, one of the things that I told you earlier about the visualization, if you remember, for example, if you're in the next slide, I'm gonna show you how it's gonna happen. I'm just giving you a heads up. So if you later wants to look at your signals that you have recorded, then you can come here and look at the signal group, choose your signal group. It's not just for recording, it's, it's gonna be also later for visualization that you can use it. But if you look at here, you have different level of staging. It's the hardware, software stage one, and software stage two. So what's the difference? So Hardware and software stage one, these are the level that when you're applying these filters, they're going to be saved, right? Uh, however, the software stage two is the way that I want to visualize when I'm doing recording, I want to apply these filters, but I do not want this to affect my raw data. It's, it's the way that I'm going to apply this software stage two. The other cool feature is that you can apply different type of filters and then you can apply multiple filters at the same time. For example, at this, at this example that here I'm trying to show you, I have choose software stage one and I'm saying, okay, I'm interested to look at the spike. So then I decided then what's the frequency that I want. I'm gonna go and choose the band pass and then through that, I will go and, and look at the ports that my electrode is connected and I will say, okay, so for this, for this spike, the frequency is between 300 um, hertz to 5,000, right? So I will choose that and I will say, okay, you know what? I will also add the notch filter. I will add that. And then, you know, I will, and then by adding the filter to the filter group, then you need to add another session of adding that filter to the signal group. And it depends to the soft, to the stage that in the beginning you have to choose. For example, if I was, if I had choose the software stage two, then it will go here. If I had in the beginning, in the first stage, I, I had choose software stage one, it will come up here and add it as a bundle to the previous, um, you know, filter that I have added here. And then you can also control the uh, filters here. You can add more, more filters here, or you can delete it using this uh, trash bin here. So, and then at the end, again, you can also save it if you want to have it as a, um, as a default for your further recordings. So through this tab, we just understood that it's possible to apply different filters at different stage. And again, these, these uh, stage are all, you know, the, uh, the parts that right now we are actively working on. And in the next, you know, um, release of this software, you are, please just get, stay tuned for this and you are gonna see more features are gonna be added for our signal processing um, options. So the other things that this software is giving you is HD snapshot and what's that? So consider that, for example, you're looking at this signal at this view and then you see some potential signal here, right? So what you're gonna do, then you say, okay, I want to go and see at this, you know, at this view that I think, uh, you know, for example, this time point, I want to go and have higher resolution to see exactly at the smaller time window what's happening. And then HD snapshot is the place that is gonna give you that information. And you can, you can go through, if, if uh, you go and scroll down, you can see all the channels at the same time. And at the same time, you can see the 
amplitude, the mean and max uh, for, for the amplitude, for the voltage of your signal and the time range that you have selected. So you can go play with different duration, you can change the start time, and actually this uh, icon here, the available window here, it's going to tell you what are, uh, what are uh, the windows that you are looking at. And of course, you know, you can even close it completely, this one, you know, you can close your monitor tab and give it more space to have the better view of what has exactly happened during your recording. So the other things that we like to um, emphasize is about the signal metrics here. And this, what's the signal metrics? What, what should be your expectations? So let me, uh, here, I'm trying to show you um, this feature by opening the monitor and the signal metrics tab that again, you can open them through the dashboard or through the left side of your tray. And here you can see the signal metrics is gonna be the same uh, view of your electorate that you have chosen already from your electorate tab. And through the port, you can see which, which port is connected. And through the matrix here, you can go and see on each recording site very easily, you can look at the values like the absolute value for the maximum voltage of your signal, or you can look at the maximum uh, voltage of your signal, or the minimum, or the mean value. And one of the features that honestly is very cool, especially if you want to start uh, recording and you want to first, you know, set up your uh, system, is going is coming to this tab and then looking at the noise level, you know, it's going to be easier to track it here instead of tracking on the monitor window. It's, um, you know, it's going to tell you what's exactly the noise. And if you want to play with the location of your electrode in the brain, according to the voltage that it's giving you, you can go deeper to reach the target or you can pull out your electorate to come to the shallower area. So it's really cool, really a lot of information here. And then, uh, and then about the signal to the noise ratio, which is one of the features that many people are interested, you are gonna look at the, you, you can give this threshold to your signal to say, okay, how you want to assign this threshold and uh, you know, decide for signal to the noise ratio. So one of the features that here you say we are, we are considering applying the voltage threshold. And through that, according to the, uh, the region of the brain that you are monitoring, you can come up with different numbers here. So it's very, um, you know, it, again, it, it depends to the location of the brain that, that you are. And, you know, you say, oh, no, you know, I'm changing my mind. I don't want to go with, um, you know, with the voltage. I want to set the standard deviation of the noise. And I will say, okay, it would be my standard deviation. And if it passed that, then I will consider my signal to the noise ratio to, to be reported according to that. And then, for example, here I have choose 3.5, but again, it's, it's, it's up to you. Some people go with, you know, higher numbers. Some people, you know, consider lower number. And then another thing, um, you know, uh, through this tab is that at the live situation, when you're streaming and you're recording, you can go through this live update and see the status of uh, each recording site. Uh, you know, simultaneously that you're streaming. So which is giving you this power to know exactly what's happening at your recording location in the brain. And then when you scroll down uh, through this uh, signal metrics window, what you see, you can see that it gives you all the value that was defined earlier on the top uh, view of your, um, you know, of your metrics. And then through, uh, through the three bars uh, icon that, uh, you know, you can go and choose which of these columns you want to be shown or you want to, um, you know, you want to stay or I mean that you can design your workspace and then at the end you can save it to uh, through this through this icon here and it's exportable to the CSV format. So, um, According to this, we just showed you, yeah, I just realized um, the online version has issue with these videos and then after each one, um, right now I cannot get to the next slide. Excuse us for this. And these are just because of this COVID that I hope it disappears soon. So, okay. So according to this, I just showed you 
using this signal metrics, what would be your expectations, what you can do, and you, are, you just saw that you can look at your signal voltage, you can look at the noise level, and it's, as I said, it's gonna be the best place for you initially when you are trying to set your, uh, to, you know, to play with the noise level of your recording. And then again, it gives you this option to set the threshold. So actually, this is the part that actively we are working on. And as, an, um, as a news, I'm gonna tell you, for example, in our uh, product line, we are, right now we are looking to add the, for example, the common average referencing for removing the noise or adding the virtual referencing to add. So just please remember, this that I showed you is just for this version of, uh, of a logo, that is version 2.1.3. And for the next, I'm sure that you're gonna see those features here. So just please follow and stay tuned with the, up, with the updates of this software. So let's see what's this feature. It's really cool feature that I'm sure is gonna be the question of many of you guys that uh, are recording your data using the other systems and then you want to see how you can come back, use this software and visualize them through this software. So, um, so here, what I'm trying to show you, um, I'm trying to open the system tab and uh, give you this idea that how you can go and uh, visualize your data. So the system tab is the place that earlier I, I, I showed you and I said it's the place that you can check the hardware connection, right? So if you scroll down, you will see that you're at the bottom of this page, you're coming with the, with the place that uh, you can look at your recorded signals. You're going to have this information that like, you know, the name, the type that right now we are offering the X dot format that is very easy. And, uh, you know, it's the binary format that is very easily readable using the MATLAB or Python. And then you can look at the recorded type when you did recording, the duration, what was the second minutes or hours. And through these icons here, you can go and uh, go for sorting. If you want to, you know, go with the earlier time or later time, you can play with that. And then uh, apart from that, you know, you can do that for each of these columns here. And apart from that, you have these three bars here that again, uh, the same that you saw in the, other, uh, in the other tabs, you can go and select or deselect each of these columns and show them uh, and let them to appear or disappear from your uh, uh, table here. But one of the other things when you're doing recording, it's the place that let you, uh, that you can go and change the place of recording. And then at the same time, you should always after recording, uh, you know, go and uh, play with the refresh button to just let the latest one uh, of recording show up. So here for playing, I just, if you were looking, I just played this triangle and then by, by, uh, by um, selecting that, then the window that came up asked me for the signal and I chose the signal one. And if you come up here, you can see that the signal one is, uh, is selected. And by opening the monitor or also the other tabs here, I can see what was that recording that I earlier record earlier. Um, you know, I was recording or I was looking at. And actually through this tab here, I can, you know, choose a couple of signals that I have, um, you know, I have replayed, I have requested to replay. And then through this convert button here, this is really, really cool feature that when you're, it's gonna ask you what's the destination that you want to choose. And after choosing your, your destination, you're gonna, select what's the, you know, the file that you want to look at. And, um, you know, right, right now, the formats that we are uh, offering, it's the next format and NWB that probably most of you, you know, have, should have heard about it. And NWB is actually, is the format of neural data without the borders. And it's the one that NIH right now is pushing to coming with the common platform for sharing and, uh, you know, and um, 
handling the data in a safe mode. So actually our company is the first pioneer for that and we are the first one that um, offering that. Um, so if for example you have uh, data that you have recorded from the other signal again and you want to come and use our software it's highly compatible you can use it and uh, we can go case by case if for example you're using the higher higher uh, channel count you know like norpixel yes the, the answer is that yes we are coming with this mapping and we are trying to actively supporting um, these features so you just need to you know come with your questions and then we are going to tell uh, how we can help you and support case by case. And then the, uh, so according to this, I just showed you using this system tab, you have this power to control the connected ports, which are the connected ports that um, you have already connected. So since this is compatible with the Smartbox Pro, our data acquisition system right now, it shows four ports and uh, that two of them are connected. Uh, however, you know, again, we can also work on this and um, see how we can design it for your recording um, setup that, that you have or the acquisition system that you have. And then uh, we were looking earlier that you can set channels through here. You can look the available channels that are connected and then you can select or deselect through these features here. And either you can add or remove through going and toggling through this icon here. You can say, for example, I want to remove my channel one from visualization or I, or I hear, for example, the 64 that are connected are showing here. It's just, it's just you should just know that these are all just for visualization. At the end, at the saving mode, all of the data would be there. And the other thing you, uh, we just showed that you can go to the peripherals, look at the analog in. Here you have two analog in, two digital in, and two digital out. That again, these are for uh, letting other devices to match and sync with the ethos data. And um, so you can control those features through here. That you know, uh, we are going to dive in more details when we go through the online presentation for the Allego to go and open the Allego software itself and we can go through the sample workflow and show you, uh, you know, how you can uh, exactly, you know, design your experiment. And then we showed you how through this uh, system tab, you can go replay your data, the data that you recorded, and then uh, how you can convert it. And we told you the available versions that we have and we are offering, but this part is also updating and we are adding more compatibility. And then also you were able to, at the bottom of this page, you were able to look at and track the time that you were able to record and save your data. And one of the other cool feature that I'm just gonna show you is about this terminal feature. And what does this mean? It means that this software has been designed for people at every level of you know of uh, coding so i know that there are many people that prefer to go and control the software by you know giving the comment to software then yes the software has been designed for that and through this cool feature here uh, at the bottom here you can go and click on that after clicking the window is going to open that by going through this then you can just write your comment and control the software directly through this platform but again if if you do not know anything about coding then you're welcome to go and use this powerful platform of dashboard or the left side here and use that which is very user friendly and uh, help people with the people uh, with the people that coming with the zero knowledge of coding. So I think right now um, I try to cover all the aspects, most of the aspects, not all. Uh, excuse me, because there are a lot of features um, that when uh, next week we go through. Um, you know, the online version we are going to face. And again, as I said, we are very open to the suggestions. Just please contact us. And uh, we have the active group uh, of software developers that they're working on that. And definitely we are working on that and we can um, update the, uh, you know, the available version. So 
so for example, you know, if, if you be uh, one of our customers, you would notice that how fast and rapidly we are updating this software. So right now, you know, it's version 2.1.3. And I remember that something like um, a week ago, it was two version before this, you know what I mean? So this version, this, um, this uh, software is upgrading very fast. It's why that I suggest everyone to, you know, check our website and um, look at the, you know, updated features.